Hello, I am Michelle Davis of the Center for Manufacturing Research at Tennessee Tech University in Cookville, Tennessee. Welcome to the Spring 2019 Golden Eagle Additively Innovative Virtual Lecture Series. This is the seventh semester we have produced this popular and informative series. The series is hosted by the TTU Center for Manufacturing Research and the iMaker Space at TTU. The CMR is recognized as an accomplished center of excellence that draws together resources from the state of Tennessee, the university, industries, and government funding agencies into a cooperative effort to be on the leading edge of the latest technological advances in the manufacturing field. The iMaker space, located in the Volpe Library on Tennessee Tech's campus, has a goal of providing an interactive and collaborative space for students and faculty to use in pursuit of innovative and entrepreneurial projects. Additive manufacturing is a focus of both entities, and as such, this short virtual lecture series has been planned to highlight the best practices, potential problems, technological advancements, innovations, and scientific contributions in additive manufacturing with expert talks from various institutions, industries, R&D centers, and laboratories. Today, for our final lecture of the semester, we are honored to hear from Amy Fricks of DeKalb County High School in Tennessee. Her talk is titled, Project iGen, Using Additive Manufacturing for Service Learning. The speaker will provide her contact information for questions after the presentation is over. Thank you, and I turn the presentation over to Amy. Thank you, Michelle. All right, hello and welcome. My name is Amy Fricks, and I'll be presenting, like Michelle said, over the iGen projects that we did here in DeKalb County uh, and how we're using additive manufacturing for service learning. Uh, I'm a math teacher currently at DeKalb County High School, and here's my contact information if you'd like to get in touch with me after the talk. Uh, if you have any more questions or comments about the project that we did or anything else that we're doing with STEM in DeKalb County. Um, so a little bit of my background, I graduated from Tennessee Tech with a degree in mechanical engineering in 2016. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to pursue K-12 education. And so I went ahead and went to school and got my master's degree and my teaching certificate. So I've been teaching for two years at DeKalb County High School. Um, and so I'm really excited about all the STEM initiatives that we've started since I got here um, and and how that's going to pan out in the future. It's really exciting. So specifically today I'm going to share with you about the iGen project that we started this spring um, that was a partnership with the our local NHC healthcare center. Uh, so before we start I just want to share with you kind of my philosophy behind uh, the decisions that I make when I plan my lessons and when we plan projects for STEM here in our county. Um, and that's all kind of driven by this, this quote from Benjamin Franklin, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. So everything that we do with STEM here, we, wanna, we want our kids to be as involved as possible and for it to be hands-on so that, because we believe that that's, that's how they learn the best. So the iGen project was a partnership formed between our high school and our NHC chapter here in Smithville, Tennessee. And we heard about this opportunity uh, at a conference that we went to last year at Lipscomb University where a teacher from Red Bank, Tennessee shared that she was working, she was an elementary teacher and she was working with a local nursing home. Um, and they actually had set up a classroom there for her students at the nursing home. And so they were visiting um, at least once a week and building relationships with those residents. Um, and doing projects with them. And we just thought that that sounded like a really great opportunity for students. And so we kind of morphed that into our iGen project, which was conducted with high school students. So our, our goals for that project were to provide an opportunity for students to become confident, independent learners through the inquiry, pro inquiry process, offer experiences for intergenerational learning, um, so we wanted this to benefit not only the residents, but our students as well. And we felt like the sharing of values between those two parties could be really beneficial for each one. And it was also an opportunity to develop leadership skills and relational skills for our students. Um, so some of our secondary goals were to help them, those students practice the engineering design process uh, while, they, while they did this project. 
So this project was conducted with uh, a bridge math class, which is senior uh, seniors in high school. Uh, and so we had about 24 seniors that participated in this project for this first year. And we decided to take four visits to the NHC facility here. And so during that first visit, uh, students had prepared questions and they met with each resident. We had uh, five participants, five residents that participated. So students went around and met with each one uh, and they had prepared interview questions and we did sort of a speed dating style interviews with them. Uh, so they were with each resident for about 10 minutes. And it was really neat to see how those students uh, really bonded with each group kind of bonded with a different resident on some level. Uh, and so that then they chose who they wanted to work with. So after that first visit, they came back to school after having learned about uh, the disabilities that these residents had and some challenges that they had that they needed uh, a solution for. And so students came and, and got together and started brainstorming about they, what they thought they might do. And so during that second visit, we went back and they presented their concept design to the resident to kind of get their approval uh, for moving forward with the project. So during the third visit, uh, they took back prototypes. We had a budget um, for this project um, that was made possible by the Foundation for Geriatric Education. They gave us some funds to be able to purchase supplies. And so students came up with budgets um, and we ordered materials and they developed prototypes, which they took back on our third visit uh, and did some testing and then finally, we had a, a luncheon for our fourth visit where students did formal presentations and they left their items with the resident for them to be able to use on a daily basis. So I want to share with you um, the some of the projects that our students completed and then one of them that I want to highlight where they actually used um, additive manufacturing a lot in their project. So our, one of the one of the projects that they came up with was a workout machine for this resident to use in his room. Uh, this group of boys really bonded with uh, this 93 year old resident uh, and he, he told them that he liked to do pull ups on his, on the bar on his bed every day. And he told him that one day he had done something like 190 pull ups. Um, and so they thought it would be cool to, to design a workout machine for him. And so they, they built this frame and then used a pulley system and attached weights uh, to where he could change out the weights and so that he could either sit on the end of his bed uh, and use it or stand in his room and use it. That was a really neat project that they came up with. Another project uh, that students worked on was a modified grabbing tool. Uh, this resident they met with the first time that we went to NHC and she notified them that Often when she would drop things on the ground, she had difficulty picking them up from her wheelchair. And so she normally had to ask for help. And so a big part of this project that we tried to explain to our students was the goal, one of our big goals for, for our actual designs was to design something for, to make the residents more independent uh, so that they didn't have to rely on someone else um, for these tasks. And so, we had an occupational therapist from our district come and, and kind of work with students and give them some examples of assistive technology. Uh, and that was something that she communicated with is that the biggest part of, of physical therapy and occupational therapy is uh, providing more independence for that individual. Um, so, so this group uh, decided to take a, an existing grabber tool and um, they made the decision to add a ball joint in the center of it. Um, so they, they kind of cut the existing grabber tool and added a piece and added a ball joint so that they could adjust the angle uh, for the resident to pick things up. She had tried using grabber tools um, that were just the normal straight pieces uh, and had difficulty with those because of the way she sat in her wheelchair. Um, so that was a really practical thing that they could modify for her uh, to help her out a little bit. So another project that students worked on was a bedside charging station uh, for their resident. So when they met her, Miss Beverly, uh, she notified them that she had a phone and a tablet that she used and she had to charge them across the room. Uh, and she had difficulty getting in and out of bed. And so 
she always had to ask someone to either help her out of bed to go retrieve them or to retrieve the items for them. So again, uh, in order to create more independence for her, they created this charging station that could sit next to her bed. And so they modified an existing podium uh, to be able to do that for her. So that was something that was really practical, uh, but really met a need for her. Um, and so she was, she was really grateful to have that. This group, um, their resident, when they met with her, they didn't notice um, any clear physical disabilities that she had. And so they kind of had trouble coming up with something at first that they, could, that they could design for her. But she told them that she likes to read on her tablet when she's in bed uh, and she gets tired of holding it up. And so they designed a customized iPad, iPad stand for her to be able to do that. So this is our, the final project that students did. Um, and this is where we use the manufacturing the most. Um, this resident uh, was a younger resident in the assisted living wing and he had suffered a stroke. And so one of the residual effects of that was a condition that caused his hand to uh, retract and ex extend and contract involuntarily. And so, by the time it got to be night, uh, he, his hand was really sore from that happening all day long. And so he had tried other devices before, but none of them seemed to really work well for him. And so when the students came back to school, uh, they started doing a little bit of research and they decided to uh, use a hand splint for him, which could be customized. Uh, so they weren't real happy with what they found that was existing online. Um, because it wasn't really customized to the individual's hand size and um, the ones that they found looked like they would be pretty uncomfortable to use if they had to use them all day. So we decided to 3D print the splint. So when they went back for their second visit, um, the students traced the resident's hand and, and took some measurements and then also took his ring size so that they could create straps. Attention students. And so um, we decided to design the model in Autodesk Inventor. And so I kind of walked them through how to do that. Uh, so they used the sketch that they had gotten from his hand uh, when, they, when they went for their second visit. And so we ran into a problem when we went to print. We tried printing on a Dremel 3D40 and then a Robo R2 that we had bought for our project. Um, but both of those print beds were too small uh, so the, so we really had to scale down the model a lot and it didn't end up being large enough for his hand. And so we went through a lot of uh, iterations and tried to think of ways that we could get around that. Um, we, the team ultimately decided to, to cut the model in half and print it as two pieces. And so rather than redrawing it in Autodesk Inventor, um, we decided to use mesh, mesh mesh mixer, which I had learned how to use in Dr. Fidon's uh, workshop this past summer. And so we, we used the plain cut tool and just sliced it in half um, and discarded one half at a time and then saved them as separate STL files. And so the, the group ultimately used hinges uh, to connect the two pieces. Uh, and they decided to cut it horizontally uh, because they wanted it to be able to be folded up and stored a little more easily. Um, and then we ultimately also had to end up cutting the, the infill down a lot. They, they started with an infill of about 15% and it was pretty heavy. So the, the final model was about 8% infill and that worked really well for them. So they, they put a cover, as you'll see in a second, they, after we printed the splint itself, um, they wanted to make sure it was really comfortable for their resident because he was gonna have to wear it all day. And so uh, they ordered some, some memory foam pellets and then they sewed a fabric cover over it. Um, so you can see in this video in just a second that them presenting it to, it to him. The first thing you'll see in the video is a, um, 
kind of like a little stress pillow that they also made for him uh, so that it was just something comfortable. If he wasn't wanting to use the splint, he could just put the, the memory foam pillow on his hand um, at other times. So I'll let you watch this video. All right, so I don't know if you could hear uh, them at the end there, but he was talking about how he had regifted the, the the students had brought him some Girl Scout cookies um, the during the third visit. Um, so one of the big benefits of this project uh, was just the relationships that our students built with the residents there, and that was that was probably the the neatest thing for us to see um, while they were providing devices for those residents to use. Um, the big benefit for us um, was really those relationships. So um, you can see some of the students, uh, what they had to say about the project. Um, a lot of them, this was the best project that they said that they'd ever participated in um, in high school. And this group of students was in a, a, a class called Bridge Math, which um, is, is basically a class for, for senior students who have decided that they don't want to take uh, any dual enrollment math classes or any college math classes and so they take this class as a graduation requirement so it's not always seen as the most exciting class it's kind of just something that students feel like they just kind of have to get through and so this project really offered an opportunity to make that something more exciting and something more meaningful for them before they graduate high school so we want to make sure um, in all the the stem things that we're doing that we're providing opportunities for service learning, which means that um, our learning is connected to um, something that can benefit our community. Because ultimately, once our students graduate, um, they're going to be members of the, the community and we need to make sure that uh, in everything that they do, that they have in mind uh, the needs of their community and helping to meet those needs. Um, so, so that's the basics of the iGen project. Um, we plan to carry that on into next year. We might be uh, doing that with a different age group next year to see how that goes, but we um, had a lot of success with high school students doing that. So uh, before I finish up here, I wanted to share some other ways that we're using additive manufacturing in our makerspace. So um, during the summer of 2018, we were awarded a grant from BVI, which is um, an organization of TVA retirees. It's a nonprofit organization. They gave us some funds to build a makerspace in our existing media center in our school. And so we have several 3D printers in there um, that we've bought and ones that we've gotten for, donated and from workshops and things like that. And so one of the things that we did, some of the things that we did before the iGen project, um, last semester in the fall, we have a class called Applied Mathematical Concepts. Um, and so they did some smaller scale assistive technology uh, designs for students that are in our district. So one of the things that they came up with were customized pencil grips. Um, so they used Tinkercad for that. Uh, the students in that class didn't have much previous exposure to 3D modeling, and so a lot of what we did was in Tinkercad, um, but they took, they took Tinkercad a long way and were able to do a lot of really neat things for that. So they made um, those pencil grips and printed those on our Dremel 3D40 machine. Um, 
so that they could be custom to different hand sizes um, and then whether someone writes with their left or their right hand. And then another project that they did for our STEM outreach event, we did a, uh, we do an event called, um, which is just a family STEM night in the fall. Um, and we had a, a couple boys in that applied math class who are really into music. Um, and so they wanted to develop and design uh, a new musical instrument. And so um, I worked with them on, we actually designed this one in Autodesk Inventor. And so uh, you can see that they've attached uh, rubber bands to that and they, they actually tuned it to where each rubber band would make a different note and they could play kind of commonly known songs on that. So that was a really neat way for them to demonstrate to younger students uh, how 3D printing can be used. And it's not only something that is just for science or um, technology purposes, but it, it's something that can apply to, to different areas of their life. So that was really neat. And then we've had several students who have participated in re our regional science fair uh, that takes place at Tennessee Tech. And so um, different groups that have participated in that have had needs for uh, items to be printed. And one of those was a group who designed a concept for a conveyor system for removing trash from oceans or rivers or our local bodies of water. And so they, they made some designs um, in Tinkercad and we printed those um, to make a conveyor system for that. So um, we're really seeing students uh, get really excited about 3D printing in our district and uh, just the possibilities that are there. Um, and so it's fun on the K-12 level to be able to uh, see them start uh, getting excited about being able to print something that's their own, that they have designed themselves um, and that they've come up with and see how it, it can come into a product from the printer. So again, if you have any questions for me, um, you can certainly email me. It's just amyfricks at thecabschools.net. If you would like to keep up with what's going on with STEM in our school district, uh, we have an Instagram page that's just at DeKalb Makerspace. Um, and then our projects and our uh, outreach events are covered on wjle.com and in, in our local newspaper, the Smith, Smithville Review. Um, so I just wanna give credit to a lot of people who helped out with our iGen project. Um, so first is the Foundation for Geriatric Education. They uh, granted us the funds to be able to do this project, so we couldn't have done that without them. And then Clint Hall is the director at our local NHC, and he's just been really fantastic um, to work with and has coordinated all this with us and has been just willing to do anything to help us, and that's been fantastic. Uh, and then Dr. Kathy Bryant, she's our uh, supervisor of instruction. Uh, she has been a key, has had a key role in planning and uh, carrying out this project as well. And then we have a really strong CTE department, which we couldn't have done this project without them. Students have worked in our um, manufacturing shops and uh, woodworking shops to be able to complete their projects. Um, so again, this is, um, this is something I'm really passionate about and this is one of the favorite, my favorite things that I've done as far as STEM outreach goes. And so if you um, are interested in learning more about how we carry this out or how you can do that, uh, in your district or with with people that you know, uh, feel free to reach out and we can kind of talk you through that. Um, I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, and like I said, feel free to email me if you have any other questions.